may be the most stylish fighter aircraft of World War II, the Garving FOU Corsair, with its sleek lines recognizable to anyone who is even a little interested in aviation. Developed as a carrier-based fighter, Strier started its service as land-based because its development and entering its service had some difficulties, but eventually, by the end of World War II, it became one of the best fighter aircraft around, and many Japanese pilots regarded it as the most formidable American fighter to go up against. In February 1938, new specifications were set out for twin and single-engine carrier-based fighter planes. The Ward Corporation entered two designs and won the competition with one of them, the XF4U-1. After winning, the design team with the lead of Rex Weissel quickly set to work. The Corsair's design was drawn up from the beginning to incorporate the Pratt & Whitney R2800 radial engine, which produced 1800 horsepower. The unique Garving design was a logical choice, as it kept the landing gear short to withstand the sometimes harsh carrier landings, but still raised the fuselage so a large propeller could be installed to make use of the powerful engine. This type of wing was more difficult to manufacture, but it was considered worthy to use, as it brought many positives. The Corsair was the first Navy aircraft to utilize a fully enclosed, retractable landing gear. During development, there were numerous problems, however, which had to be fixed before the fighter could enter service. One of these was the aircraft's tendency to get into a spin easily during low speed flight such as carrier landings and the left wing would stall very quickly and without warning flipping the plane over. This was a very dangerous and potentially lethal fault, but luckily a minor change fixed it. A 6 inch long stall strip was added to the right wing which allowed the right wing to stall at the same time as the left one, preventing the spin. There were some other problems found during the carrier trials which had to be fixed before the aircraft was considered safe to enter service. The Corsair's rear-mounted cockpit and high nose already made carrier landings difficult for less experienced pilots because of the bad visibility, but it was found that sometimes oil can splatter on the windscreen, making the situation even worse. Also, the plane's undercarriage had a tendency of bouncing at landing. These problems were fixed eventually, but they slowed down the process and in the meantime the F6F Hellcat entered service. The Navy decided that the F6F will be standardized as the main carrier-based fighter, which was a less advanced design than the Corsair, but was successful from the start and was easier to handle. The Corsair was put to use by the Marines as a land-based fighter and was not deployed on carriers until 1944, but we will talk more about that when we get to the combat history. Now let's see the Corsair's technical specifications. Length 10.2 meters, wingspan 12.5 meters, height 4.5 meters, wing area 29 square meters, armament 6 50 caliber machine guns mounted on the wings, up to 4000 pounds of bombs and up to 8 rockets, power plant and performance. The final version of the Corsair used the Pratt & Whitney R2800 18W radial engine producing 2380 horsepower, maximum speed 446 miles an hour, cruise speed 250 miles an hour. Range more than a thousand miles. Service ceiling 41,500 feet. Let's take a look at the main variants of the F4U Corsair. XF4U1, the original prototype. F4U1, or Corsair Mark I for the British, these were the production variants and they were improved over the prototype in many ways. They featured six 50 caliber machine guns in the wings, replacing the fuel tanks. The enlarged fuel tank was fitted in the fuselage ahead of the cockpit. A more powerful version of the R2800 engine were fitted. 150 pounds of armor plating was fitted around the cockpit. F4U1A or Corsair Mark II for the British. These variants received a taller, wider canopy, similar to the British Malcolm Hood, instead of the early birdcage variants. The F4U1A introduced the aforementioned stall strip on the wings and an improved undercarriage. The aircraft delivered to the British service were modified with 8 inch smaller wingspan to fit in the smaller British carriers. F3A1 and F3A1D, or Corsair Mark III. These were built at Brewster. More than 400 units were produced, but the contract was terminated quickly after several planes lost their wings because of the poor building quality. FG1A and FG1D or Corsair Mark IV. These were built by Goodyear. They were produced until the end of the war and more than 4000 units were delivered. F4U-1C. These variants received four 20mm cannons instead of six 50 caliber machine guns. Although the 20mm cannons improved firepower, they had freezing problems at high altitude, so most pilots preferred the machine gun versions. These were later fixed with the installation of gun heaters. 
F41B. These versions received the new R2800 AW engine with water injection and were equipped for ground attack roll with pylons for bigger payload. F4U2 Experimental plane to use the Corsair as carrier based night fighter. It was armed with five 50 caliber machine guns. One of the guns was deleted to make room for the radar. F4U4 The last variant to see action during World War II. Deliveries to the US Navy of the F4U4 began in early 1945. It featured the new 2100 horsepower dual stage supercharger engine. F4U4B 300 of the F4U4s were built with 20mm cannons. F4U4E and F4U4N Late World War II night fighter variants, equipped with radar and four 20mm cannons. F4U5 This was a 1945 design modification to incorporate many of the pilot's suggestions. This was the first variant with all metal wings. It featured a new engine, the Pratt & Whitney R2800-32E variant with 2760 horsepower. Improved controls, modernized cockpit, heated guns and many more. Also had a radar equipped N version. AU-1 When the Marines needed a more robust ground attack aircraft, this version was created with extra armor around the pilot and fuel tanks, relocated coolers and a simplified supercharger as it was not intended for high altitude use. It had a bigger maximum payload as well, with a capacity to carry 8200 pounds of bombs. This was first produced in 1952 and so used in the Korean War. And now we get to the combat history of the Corsair. The US Navy first received the F4U Corsair in 1942 and it was declared combat ready by the end of the year. The only used as a land-based aircraft until the landing issues were worked out. It was only issued to carriers late 1943. Soon after, a decision was made that to simplify parts supply, that medium and light carriers will be using F6F Hellcats as standard and the Corsair will be used mainly by the Marines. In Marine use, the Corsair operated from Guadalcanal from early 1943. They quickly developed tactics to use the Corsair's superior speed and climbing ability to combat the more nimble Japanese planes and avoid turn fighting. These tactics helped US pilots to score multiple victories, like 2nd Lieutenant Kenneth A. Walsh, who ended the war with 21 confirmed kills. On one occasion, a Marine pilot, Lieutenant Robert R. Klingman, attacked the Japanese plane, but his guns froze at the high altitude, so he closed up and rammed the Japanese plane's tail with his propeller. Despite missing chunks of the propeller, he made it back to the airfield safely. When the Royal Navy first received the Corsair, it was deemed dangerous to land, but since the Royal Navy didn't have any better aircraft, they put them to use. Later they developed a curved landing approach, which meant they could keep an eye on the carrier on approach. This technique was later adopted by the US forces as well. The British received 95 F4U-1s, which they named Corsair Mark I later 510 F4UD versions, which they called Corsair Mark II, 430 Brewster-built Corsairs, Corsair Mark III, and 857 Goodyear-built aircraft, which they called Corsair Mark IVs. They were used both in Europe and on the Pacific. New Zealand received 424 Corsairs during the war. The Corsairs saw action in the Korean War as well, in ground attack role and in the form of AU-1 ground attack versions. This version had a single stage supercharger as it was not intended for high altitude use and more armor plating to protect the pilot. The French Navy used Corsairs after World War II as well. They saw actions in the Indochina War, the Algerian War and in the Suez Crisis. The Corsair has been named the official aircraft of Connecticut due to its multiple connections to Connecticut businesses. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.